everyone, and welcome to Inside Leather History, a fireside chat. I'm Doug O'Keefe, and I am the host and the co-producer of these chats with Mistress Joanne Gaddy. The fireside chats are a program of the Leather Archives and Museum. Today, I'm sitting down for an interview with Antti Kalpinen, who is the ECMC Secretariat. He's a leather and fetish activist in Helsinki, Finland. How are you, Antti? I'm fine, I'm fine. Very good. Well, let's go back a little bit. Please tell me about your growing up, a little bit about your family, where you're from, so that we can understand you a little. Okay, so uh, I'm from quite original middle-class family from Helsinki City. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> I, I went to the uh, uh, College of Performing Arts, so I have this sort of an artistic background. Uh, and and then I started to do uh, cultural science and cultural philosophy studies, and and uh, and I but I have been living quite here and there. I have been studying in Saint Petersburg and in Hong Kong, and and I have been traveling. I I, I was also in Los Angeles in the Tomo Finland Foundation as a as an artist residence, and and uh, I have been doing quite sort many sort of things going around and that's the reason why I'm also active in 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 the more more wider uh, 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 LGBT things not just in Finland why did you study in St Petersburg and of all places why Hong Kong uh, I just wanted to get out from uh, uh, from Finland <laughs> that was my first thing I want to go and I want to go somewhere different like I didn't want to go to any similar place I I uh, yeah, I found it very interesting, and, and Saint Petersburg was it was super. Interesting. It was in '99 when I moved there, and I actually ended up living there for seven years. So, mm. so it was um, really interesting times. It was the times when, like, just year after I moved out, the first anti-LGBT laws were were uh, introduced. But back mm. then, when I was living there, there was still possibility that it could have gone to the other direction. But I didn't go. Uh, but they <laughs> launched. Uh, uh, interesting new uh, uh, trans laws which were uh, quite advanced back then and so on so there was possibilities of things going differently but then the uh, church got hand on on politics and and that's when the shit hits the fan how was the gay scene that you knew in saint peter's <clears throat> well it's it's a huge city people of, of five six million people so so obviously on the city of, of that size, there is always a gay scene, uh, whatever happens, whether it's in Saudi Arabia or wherever. So, so uh, I was quite nerd back then, and I was just reading and and quite monogamous in my in my uh, perspective, and quite reading poems and and being very romantic. So, so that's how gone. But no, <laughs> no, no, I, I, but yeah, like, like I was, I was quite okay to be in more of a vanilla uh, 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 situation in my life back then. I did an interview with the late Alexei Grachev and mm -hmm. he spoke about the kinky oh. scene and the leather scene in St. Petersburg. It was very uh, underground. Mm -hmm. Did you experience any of that while you were there? No, I don't think so. No, but I didn't experience it anywhere. Like I, I was like, like obviously, I remember when I was probably uh, I was like thirteen or something, and I saw uh, Tomo Finland got this um, award, this national award of of, of uh, a comic drawer, and and his drawings were in 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 newspapers in in, in Finland. So I remember I, I saw them. I was actually in library, and I just immediately ran to the uh, to the uh, toilet in the library to have a wank. Uh, because that's what you do when you see a naked guy with leathers on. So there was obviously this sort of tendencies going on already when I was quite small. But, <clears throat> but I, yeah, I, I didn't, uh, I wasn't looking for them. They weren't something that I was interested in at, at, uh, when I, in my 20s. Tell us a little bit about your coming out, about your journey with all of that. Uh, yeah, well, then, then I, little by little, uh, 
I just uh, I uh, MSC Finland Tom's Club is, is the club that is it's my my fetish uh, home, uh, so I knew that they had parties and I went them there and obviously there was this whole brotherhood feeling about it and also the sexual tension like the uh, uh, feeling of of leather and the warmth and and the smell of it and so on, and through that it somehow opened. But I was in in my late 20s so it was it wasn't something that happened when i was uh, like except those first drawings of, of tom of finland that i went with in in the library toilet but like <clears throat> after that it was yeah i was probably like 29 when i started to realize like ah okay this is the direction i i actually want to go with my sexuality how did you discover that section though uh, well i'm from finland and we have the phenomenon of tom of finland so <clears throat> like it's, it has always been there. So to realize that you are more drawn to to uh, the fetish side of of the vanilla spectrum, uh, then then yeah, like it's it's so visual and existing in in Finnish uh, like uh, uh, visual culture and and uh, uh, in the talk of of uh, art in Finland. So so yeah, everybody knows about the Finland in Finland. Well, I, since you have brought up this topic, mm -hmm. uh, some people would love to know, mm -hmm. how do the people of Finland see the images that Tom of Finland created? Because is it, is it different from what we would uh, think about it over here? I don't mm -hmm. really know how the people of Finland <clears throat> see it. Okay, I think there is a huge difference between cultures uh, that see, uh, like, what do you see sexual a priori? Like, 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 for some cultures it's touching, and for other cultures it's nudity. Finland has this whole sauna culture, so it's normal. Like, I have been in a sauna with my grandmother naked, and and like, there is no like, it's not weird. It's just, it's not even nudity. It's uh, uh, or being. Uh, not naturistic or what is it nudist or anything like that it doesn't have any sort of conversation it's just being normal without your clothes on so so seeing a picture of a person nude isn't sexual for our culture as it is for many other cultures then again touching like we have really huge differences as i as i choked at the beginning like like that we are now going back from the two meter COVID restrictions to the normal being three or four meter apart. So, so touching is way more sexualized in our, in our culture than in, for example, Southern European cultures. Uh, so I think this is something that you need to put to your head, this idea that it's normal to be outside, happy, smiling, be with your family, running to the, uh, to the uh, uh, lake from the sauna, uh, jump to the water, like this whole thing doesn't have sexuality or sexual connotations. So <clears throat> when you take Tom of Finland's pictures and you see uh, uh, naked or half-naked men smiling at, the, at each other, being fun, uh, having fun in the forest, uh, what most of the, of the Western cultures see is something sexual. But for us, it's just guys being having fun in the forest. There was in 19... 20s or 30s, or was it 1932? Finland had a postmark uh, that was a woman, a naked woman, stepping outside from a sauna, uh, uh, facing the the, uh, the picture, and the postmark was uh, was restricted not to go abroad because there were countries that thought that it was pornographical. And in Finnish connotation, it was just, it was mind blowing to think that somebody would consider sexual or inappropriate a person getting out from the sauna so uh, this is a huge and long and and quite uh, cultural scientific explanation but so this is something that's completely unique and different for the finnish uh, perspective then at the same time uh, there is quite a lot of studies now being done about how uh, in finnish culture uh, sexuality has been seen and uh, we have the biggest collection of, of uh, uh, traditional poems than any other European or, 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 or Chinese or any, any other culture and none of them has the poems of, of uh, uh, transsexuals or, or 
or uh, LGBT um, minorities in general, what does it mean? If it would have been restricted, illegal, somehow disgusting, there, there would be some sort of traces uh, that it, they were uh, restricted from the collection. But because it wasn't done, uh, it has been interpreted that it wasn't a problem at the time. So in the uh, beginning of, of 19th century, when the bombs were collected, uh, being queer in any sense of it uh, wasn't important to the uh, 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 like uh, culture of, of Finland. Uh, and then in 1920s, when this sort of a more uh, scientific uh, and uh, to say straight from, from Nazi Germany, uh, ideologies of, of straight and gay and male and female were introduced to also to, to Finnish uh, 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 culture. Uh, that's changed the system. But we can say that in the childhood of, of Tauko Laakson and Tomo Finland, he was living in a countryside um, uh, society where still he you could see that being gay or being butch woman or whatever wasn't that important so also there is this idea and from, uh, that's how i i interpret it that that tomo finland was born in finland and came from finland because of of the uh, weird uh, idea that we have that nudity isn't sick or or it doesn't have to be sexual sexualized and also uh, being from a weird finnish culture that that being gay or being queer isn't as important as other other uh, other aspects of life like working hard and that sort of things so so i think those are the things that made his art and then in in 1960s 1970s where, when uh, queer uh, visuality was still quite restricted it was always behind the curtains and there was really the con uh, the contact with the with the uh, characters so his pictures were new and and yeah came from different place from finland <laughs> what were your thoughts about the movie i think it was okay yeah i actually liked it yeah <laughs> do you feel it was accurate well i i don't know uh i talked about with his um other sisters uh a boy and 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 they told that that tom was totally spot on and, and also also his boyfriend but then the sister how he was uh, uh pictured like like he they thought that it was she was quite fictional but the family felt that that tom and and his uh, a partner were really spot on. Oh, so. very good to hear it. Very good. Yeah. Uh, let's take one step back a little bit. You mentioned that you didn't go into the leather scene until your late twenties. Mm. What were your concept about uh, concepts, rather, about the gay scene, your homosexuality prior to that? It was partying and just like going out with friends and and like being in this sort of like and because I was in the in the performing arts college so so obviously like everyone was gay or tried to be gay so it was more more normal. Mm. He, it was who you were and it was the world where you belong to, and it was never I'm really blessed in that sort of way uh, that I have never being surrounded with people who would be against it and i haven't had like my brother uh, my brother or fa uh, father and mother ha like they have always loved me so i have never had that sort of problems uh, as quite many people have what did you find fascinating or shocking or intriguing when you entered the leather scene I think the camaraderie and the whole brotherhood thing, uh, which I think has probably been in in other forms of of queer culture back uh, back in the days, but but as things become more mainstream, uh, uh, those don't, those aren't anymore that tangible in 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 most part of of, of LGBT uh, like surroundings. But uh, yeah, I, I think. That's quite interesting. Otherwise, no, like nothing shocking, really. I remember when I started, I actually, uh, in then 2015, I started to write the 
40th uh, 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 anniversary book of of, uh, uh, of my club. And I remember I, I just found this old old. Nope. <laughs> just all the members of, of our clubs club. And then I, I went and interviewed one a guy in, who was in his 80s back then. And then uh, like he just start, we were having coffee and he started to discuss about about the peace parties back in 1960s and, and like like being just really outspoken and, and relaxed and OK about it. And I remember being like, OK, yeah, here we go. OK, so this is the part of the history. But like, yeah, like I, I love them. I love the fact that how and especially the uh, all the parts, parts of our our club, uh, the journey that they have they had to do to become OK with being who they are has made them so powerful. And uh, so that it's yeah, it's quite empowering to to speak with them. How do you see the differences between the gay community, the kinky community, leather community of Finland versus other countries, other places? I'm quite surprised by the fact that there is no difference. Like it's, it is like, uh, it's super same everywhere. Like I, I don't know how can it be because like then again in the in the more vanilla uh, gay scene there are already cultural differences but in our scene i think like we are all the same it's it's quite um, unbelievable to realize how how similar to the uh, even the problems in in clubs are are similar and and everything so it's yeah it's surprising <laughs> but how about differences between helsinki and berlin or Helsinki and London or Chicago. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think it's, it's the size because like Helsinki is anyhow a, a smaller city than any of those. So, so yes, the size is, size is different, but like, yeah, I, I, like, I don't know. There is something anyhow, when you are minority inside of sexual minority, you no know, matter how big your, your uh, association would be, you still have gone through quite a lot of uh, uh, things to be okay who you are way more than the standard vanilla gay. Uh, so, so people are quite open and when a person is open, it's quite universal in a really beautiful way. What were your thoughts? How did you feel about the Tom of Finland Foundation in Los Angeles? California has been quite elementary in, in, in many ways in, in our history. So it was really interesting to see those those parts also. And obviously the uh, the Southern Californian people, they are they are hippies in so many ways. <laughs> and they are lovely. But it's like they have their own concept of time and all that. So it's it's wonderful to be there, but but trying to do some projects with them uh, like from from somewhere else, it's always a bit different. <laughs> but yeah, I really loved them, and, and it was like really lovely place to be, and 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 uh, again this sort of uh, camaraderie and and the whole uh, uh, fetish brotherhood thing was really tangible. What work were you doing there? Uh, I have actually uh, one book project that I I still haven't been able to finish, but I'm going to start to work on it then again. Uh, uh, beginning from from next year, so so I'm now working in an art museum. So so I have I have done this in between, and then I will continue the, the writing my first novel. So uh, that's what I'm going to publish then. What is the topic? Uh, uh, yeah, it's about it's quite hardcore. Like I I had a boyfriend who uh, who was beaten. So that he lost his conscience, and then he was dumped in the snow, and he froze to death uh, because he didn't uh, uh, come to his senses. Uh, so that was quite a, a huge thing when I was 27. That happened to me. Oh no, I was younger. No, but yeah, 26, 27. Oh. So, so uh, I've been thinking about that. I should write about it. Like I'm really okay. I I really processed it, and and it's just a huge part of my life. But it's like I had really good long uh, 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 relationships after that. So, but yeah, so I, and now when this whole phenomena, like it happened in, in Russia, uh, and uh, now as this whole phenomena of, of LGBT refugees in Russia is, is now happening. So I have been 
uh, doing quite a lot of uh, uh, LGBT work in with people from countries where being LGBT is illegal. Uh, so I have been starting to collect those stories. So it's a mixture of of uh, of like everything in the book is true, but then the phrasing or the like the how things are connected it's not true because like obviously like i can tell my own story and that's the reason why i'm putting it to the book uh because i i just don't want to be using other stories i i also like want to open my own own story reason why i am interested in in this sort of like more hardcore uh stories of, of lgbt people uh uh but the main idea is to open the stories of people who are now having their refugee trip and and how they become who they who they have and because quite many, obviously, trans people, uh, as they do the ref uh, refugee trip, they are being raped and, and misused in so many ways. And and it's not like if you are like already being a refugee, it's a huge risk for your life. But then if you belong to a minority, it's even bigger risk. But that's the reason why it has been taking so long to write a book, because like I have to change the like I can't use the stories so that people will be recognized from them. So I have been changing the stories and connecting them and recreating them. So I have this sort of a fictional character doing her uh, trip as the same time as I'm recovering from my lost loss and, and this whole parallel, parallel things like how uh, anyhow coming from where I come from because I am white a privileged, uh, uh, privileged uh, uh, cis men, m male, uh, I recover from huge traumas better than people who are in so many different ways, uh, are like not as privileged. Uh, because it's it's also, it's not hardcore, just hardcore, it's, it's also, it's life of the people. Like there are so many people amongst us who are at this, at this moment struggling with yes. the horrors of, of trying to, uh, get a refugee place and and trying to survive at the same time because they are the trans or, or LGBT. Is Finland wel welcoming a lot of these refugees? Not enough. Uh, I think, and yeah, and I think we should, yeah, yeah, we should definitely take way more and, and, and to, yeah, it's, it is the, the questions on that, Side, they are really problematic because at the same time you don't want to uh, create gay ghettos where you force like uh, people with with the same background, but at the same time for the yeah it's yeah it's really problematic. <laughs> I don't know how to how to but yeah but I, I hope that Western world would, would show that we be, believe in the in the morals that we believe. And that's how we show it is that we open our borders to, to people who will not be safe in their own country. From what countries are you seeing many of these refugees? Russia is growing like and, and Russia is very interesting. It's a way too weird word for this, but it's, it's uh, because people are quite educated over there and they uh, they almost have the possibility to to travel freely so so uh, it, we easily don't realize that they are actually refugees and and there there can be situations when when being an lgbt parent for example is threat both to your uh, children and to yourself and and so on so so we have to keep our eyes open and now there is obviously happening weird things in 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 like uh, also in, in EU countries are happening weird things. And then there are parts in, in, in your country that have uh, also quite alarming. So yeah, the Nazis are rising. What, what weird things are you seeing from your point of view? Well, for example, in Poland, in Poland, they have, there, there are parts of the country that have uh, said that we are LGBT free. Mm -hmm. So this sort of thing. Uh, uh, there was also a, a small city or some something just off Finnish border on the Russia side that said that they are LGBT free. And then on the other, uh, in the 
Finnish side of the border, they had a huge uh, pride march after that. So, uh, so like this sort of we are having uh, we are having both inside of the countries, but also like in the nearby countries, this sort of like quite hardcore uh, uh, backslashes. It doesn't take away from everybody, any anyone, any anything. If we give people rights to love who they love, and 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 so on, but there is something weird going on with people. How do you see the situation here in the United States? People should talk more to each other. It's not good that you are isolated. Like I was quite surprised when I talked to people, and I couldn't find anyone who would even know a person that had voted for Trump. So so like. You should, like there should be, and you should recognize the family member and go and talk with them and talk endlessly until, until they change their mind. So like, yeah. like you have to be in the dialogue, although the dialogue would be super uncomfortable, but it's the only way that we can win is that we just explain ourselves and ex reason and just like, uh, so if we isolate ourselves from, from their media and from their uh, platforms like I love going to a different sort of uh, uh, Nazi uh, chat pages with some sort of nickname gay 77 or something like that and then I'm just chatting with them about these subjects often I'm thrown away from the whole chat program but like then I get go back so that's how you should do you should like interact and and somehow try to reach bridge, uh, do bridges even the place that you know that Whatever you do, you won't change anything. But just that you are there, you uh, create a something. Somebody reacts with you, something stays. So, like, I think that was something that I recognized three years ago when I was a couple of months there in Los Angeles. I was quite surprised, like, how divided the country is and how little there is interaction. And and like, even the TV channels are different for for different people. And like that's bad like if you have two completely separate uh, narratives and no dialogue between them i'm a little surprised to hear that you would go on a, a nazi chat page and engage aren't you afraid of that well it's just a chat i i, I can then turn on off my computer obviously i don't go with my own face or or own, na own name but i have had really like so do my 77 and it's quite normally what I use when I when I go so already from from my nickname you realize that ah okay this is what he's going to be ranting about I am not afraid of conflict as long as it's not physical I'm not that afraid of physical conflict either I'm quite good with Thai boxing but like but it's not okay anyhow I don't like physical violence <laughs> how is it eye-opening what I should I even ask what you have <laughs> Yeah, well, well, it's it's yeah, it's quite interesting when when they uh, like how deranged people are, but also like after uh, uh, like now and then you also get an interaction with people and you realize that it might be actually some sort of more mental issues mm -hmm. and not just like uh, not just. Uh, uh, being actually Nazi or, or, or being like uh, right wing, that there might be actually some sort of other solution to the facts, and maybe it's because of the society isn't able or isn't willing or isn't just don't want to put money into it, don't want to help people, so people turn to become something quite horrible. I admire you for doing that. I would never have the ability to do that. Most, yeah, mo mostly I sit and watch Golden Girls, but like a couple of times a year I do that. <laughs> right. Let's, let's switch over a little bit to look at the ECMC. For the benefit of the international audience, would you please tell us what the ECMC is? Organization that uh, is created by uh, non-profit uh, leather and fetish clubs of Europe uh, uh, try to create a platform and possibility to to interact and 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 do more international work together 
So it's quite, uh, and, and the, the main idea is that it's non-commercial. So, so all the associations are just the associations and there are no like, uh, like merchandising companies or anything like that involved. So that's quite important. It, it has been quite elemental in, uh, in creating and having this sort of a, uh, uh, continent-wise net of, of discussions. What challenges? does the ECMC face? Well, there has been the uh, uh, discussion now to uh, uh, open the clubs to a more broad audience. There was a huge discussion just like 30 years ago whether whether uh, rubber was even a proper uh, fetish or, or should it be only leather and so on. So like, like it's baby steps, but, but it's also um, when... <laughs> Things are happening, and, and now, as, as the concept of of, se- of gender and sexuality, as the concept of gender changes, obviously the sexuality will change. So, uh, so it's good to have these discussions, and have the and give the um, more traditional opinions the possibility to uh, be spoken uh, open, and then uh, to actually see like how and which angles and how how can we go further and. And because like we, sexuality can't be a tradition. It can't be like, no, how do I say this? It can't be like a museum. Like we can't have sexuality freeze like, like well, Disney and then wait, the, wait a day that it will come back again. So everything will change little by little. And, and we see uh, changes in, in young generations that are now mixing the fetishes and, and the sports fetishes with the leather harness and so on. So everything goes and, and obviously the uh, I love how, how trans men are now normal part of, of, uh, of uh, our fetish existence. So these sort of changes are coming. But at the same time, it's very important to, to keep the discussion and to realize that uh, that we have to respect the safe space for different sort of minorities and safe space uh, isn't away from others. So if we would open the safe space and everyone can come, then it's not anymore safe to, for the people we wanted to create a safe space for. You mentioned, I'm going to take a step back. You mentioned mm-hmm. countries like Poland and other more restrictive mm-hmm. uh, countries. Are they also represented in the ECMC? Uh, there was a club from Poland. Uh, there is a club from from Saint Petersburg, uh, and uh, uh, yeah, yeah, there are clubs. And I, I think, ex- uh, especially for those clubs, it's very important to to have uh, the camaraderie and and to have the possibility to meet others, other other people, and and yeah. So I think it's very very important. But at the same time, it's so important that the. Um, uh, uh, Collaboration goes on their terms, so so that we don't from Western countries go and say that okay, this is how we're going to do it because they know their legislation and everything way better. So we might fuck things up just by by for uh, by forcing our ways of working things. So they uh-huh. they know. So it's it's very important for us to be not just humble but like just. Uh, take them on the level and, and listen how we can help and not go and give our help without asking like how they want to have it. How many countries are represented? Oh my God, I don't actually know. We have like, uh, huh, huh, I don't know, 15, something like that. <laughs> I don't actually know. I should check that out. I should know, but I don't know. <laughs> Please tell us more about your specific position with ECMC. It's quite a lot of diplomacy then just to find the find the right place to keep uh, somebody happy or everybody as evenly unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> but what is the um, foundation motivation? Uh, it's just a platform for the uh, uh, clubs to meet and the clubs to uh, 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 create some sort of uh, neutral uh, uh, territory 
where they can probably share ideas, uh, share their frustration, share their possibilities, that their dreams. So, so that's what it's all about. So it, it's it's really for the for the clubs, and that's the reason why it doesn't have president. It has secretaries. So the presidents are in the clubs, and and then we just create them a place where they can they can meet. What are the plans post COVID? Uh, uh, I'm uh, coordinating the media work, so we have now created a new uh, web page uh, uh, where the idea is that uh, each club has uh, two annual ECMC events. Uh, so there is a uh, pages where people can check those out, and and then the clubs can go. Uh, they have the right to go to the uh, sections. Of the of the calendar or there and change the uh, data and information and stuff so so it's more interactive and also uh, the clubs can change the information and pictures of their own club in in the uh, in the page so we are trying to make it more more uh, so that it's just not so that secretariat does all the work but so that like all everybody is in involved. So okay. that's the next page, and and then we are going to have a first, uh, like actual physical meeting where everybody is flying in. We are going to have it in southern France in Nice uh, in uh, November. So, so oh. I'll go there, and then then we see what happens there. Oh, how interesting! I wish I could attend. What plans do you personally have for your future in the community? I don't know a lot of sex. What else? Uh, <laughs> I need to buy new boots. Uh, I, don't, <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Uh, like, uh, well, yeah, the new boots I need to buy. But I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 like my exp except, except, expectations are, are quite uh, low at the moment. I just want to go to a party and meet friends and have a couple of beers. Like. I will be really happy with that. And now, like we are uh, actually in in two days, we uh, we end all the restrictions in in Finland. So 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 yeah, that's what I'm waiting for. I'm quite easy as as long as the normality comes. But then, obviously, I think probably in three months, I'm I'm already anticipating something more moon from the sky. But now, I'm just happy to have a couple of beers with my friends. What? Do you still want to accomplish in the Leather Kink community? Interesting. Uh, I think I, I'm I'm like uh, like obviously I have this book project and then I have another book project and then I would like to do my PhD and then but then there is a book project I have I have some sort of like there should be something well written. Uh, uh, novel or something about about the chem sex scene or like something something about like bringing this sort of like hardcore uh, thing not as an obscurity but as a as a standard of of existence like I, I don't and I don't know what I want to say with it yet but like it's 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 a phenomena that has been part of of uh, uh, certain type of hardcore uh, fetish community, but at the same time, it has quite been quite medicalized or or hushed up, and there is quite a lot of or almost um, uh, xenophobical tendencies towards it. So we hate people who do crystal meth, or or we try to help them, or like, like there is no normality. And I, I I don't know on which level can we have normality when there are so huge uh, like problems and stuff going on uh, on that scene. But I think that's something I believe that in uh, uh, in 20, 30, 40 years, we will look back how we now, uh, 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 how and which sort of legislations are do we have about uh, chemical substances as we are now looking back the LGBT laws in 40, 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a change that is happening in the society and as a society or as a uh, fetish community who have been always on the outskirts, we might be able to open some eyes. I don't know, I might have to like uh, rosy ideas about this and it might be really horrible and, and there, there, 
terrifying thing when you when you look closer to it but like this is something that i would want to see some sort of something more uh, scientific and less moralistic being done with well i i can tell you that the chemsex scene is viewed very differently country to country how is the scene about it in finland it's almost non-existing uh and and also like yeah it, it doesn't there is no view on it really in finland so like i i know that there was some sort of chemsex study done but there was probably like like 60 answers and you know it's not like like yeah it's yeah we drink alcohol and then we go hiking like we don't like we are this disgustingly wholesome nation <laughs> oh right <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's very good to know. <laughs> so, I would like to thank you very much for a lovely interview today and for your contribution to Inside Another History, a fireside chat. <laughs>